Hey guys, um, I actually am coming on here with some good news. Uh, the lighting isn't great, but I thought, what the heck, I gotta come on and share my story. I wish I had a podcast during this whole thing because this journey has been so insane and I feel like it could help so many people. But um, here's the deal I've been, you know, sick for over a year, three years, four years, whatever it is. And um, part of the situation is mold at our house. Um, then we had found out I have some defective genes, so I don't detox biotoxins. So it makes perfect sense why I've been so sick once we look at um, everything that's been happening. Hey guys, <laughs> um, i turn off my car here so you can hear me better. Okay, so what happened was um, I got a little bit desperate and I've had... Uh, I don't, you guys, this story is so long and that's why I wish I had it on a podcast or a blog or something so that I could share all the details with you chronologically. Clearly I need to write a book. Um, but the problem is over these last few years, um, many of you know, I've had extreme anxiety. Guess what I've learned? Anxiety and depression are like a symptom of these, these illnesses I'm dealing with. It's not normal to have anxiety or depression. So if you have that, look deeper, find a root cause. Okay, so secondly, um, I thought it was just that, right? So I was trying to do meditation and all these things, which are still good, right? No matter what, still good. Um, and along the way, um, I would have extreme right upper quadrant pain. Um, you guys know that we first discovered toxic mold in our house in December. And um, that was one of my extreme situations of of sickness and what happened to me would be um, I would get really really nauseous I would completely lose my appetite um, sometimes I would have diarrhea or constipation um, I would have extreme right upper quadrant pain we thought it was ulcers for two years they treated me with caraphate which coats the stomach and then the um, pr um, proton pump inhibitors which you guys all have heard recently um, some issues with and taking off the market. Come on, inside. <laughs> so, hey, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Hi. <laughs> Come on inside, Batman. Little Batman. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, anyway, did that. That wasn't helping. Um, did the endoscopy appointment. That didn't figure anything out. Inside. And then Sorry. continued to carry on down the journey of treating that and no no results no help so in February when we went to Hawaii I was sick the whole time um, March we came back and I went for the endoscopy appointment again and again negative they tested me for celiac and for H. pylori all the things um, negative again and you guys it's been such a journey of testing and negative 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 and um, just like this extreme pain and feeling like what the heck is at the root cause of this right and so in April I when I first started going to Mayo Clinic I did 18 of their 31 GI tests all negative they referred me back to my general practitioner <laughs> I was so frustrated when that happened and then we went um, back you know I'm in Montana um, I found another doctor because again we found mold in our basement what had happened was there was a slow leak from our hot water baseboard heater and when that happened it was going into the wall um, and growing mold and I don't know if you guys know this I'm gonna be dropping some things in this video that you can start to pay attention to in your own homes in your own lives because if um, the thing about this type of illness is it creeps up on you. The symptoms are vague, um, varied from person to person. And um, so first and foremost, water damage. You have to have water damage cleaned up within 48 hours or you grow mold in your home. Okay, that is no good. It doesn't matter if you have these defective HLA DR genes or not. <laughs> it's still no good. If you have mold, never ever put bleach on it never ever because mold releases what's called a mycotoxin it's this this gas that they produce to compete out compete each other and that's what makes people so sick so finally I um, did a mycotoxin urine test um, you can go to Great Plains lab for that you can ask a functional medicine doctor for that they won't give you that in Western medicine hospital or clinic so um, I finally did that came back positive 
finally with my first positive test. Um, and that first positive test showed that I had the mycotoxin in my body, meaning I've been exposed to the mold and um, mold can actually, guess what I've learned, um, those spores can take up residence in the body and continue to produce mycotoxin. They can also live in parasites. Um, in April, when I went to my first appointment, I went to a liver doctor because my liver was so painful and it had a growth on it that we discovered in February. So when I was at that appointment, I said to him, could I have parasites? I've traveled internationally. I have animals. I eat sushi. I um, go hiking and backpacking. We camp. We swim in lakes and rivers. All of those, you guys, are potential risk factors for parasites. So when I said in my post the other day, don't be naive because you're an American and you think we're too clean of a country to have parasites. And don't be naive um, thinking that you might not have parasites because you haven't traveled internationally, you guys. I've learned so much, my mind is blown about, it's it's like, I don't even know where to start without sounding like a crazy person. <laughs> so I'm not gonna go into that now, but I will share more about that later. So here's my news that I'm feeling extremely pleased about. Um, so I took ivermectin over a week ago. This is a drug that is used for deworming horses, dogs, and um, you know livestock. Okay. It's a very gentle drug on the system. It kills the parasites. Um, I don't even remember what it was that, ins that inspired me to do ivermectin. I've taken antiparasitic medication before because I have had Giardia four times. I had some type of parasite when I was a kid. I had parasites when I lived in India, and I've also been Nepal, Thailand, Japan. You know, I've lived overseas, um, but that was 20 years ago. So why would I think that would affect me today? Well, guess what? They can live in your body that long. Ah. So anyway, I took the ivermectin, I did a half dose. And from that day forward, for the next eight days, every single hour, I was passing parasites. And not just one kind, multiple different species, multiple different life stages, multiple different sizes, grotesque, horrific, horrendous, like truly, the long dark night of the soul. There is nothing that will make you question yourself and your sanity more than that. Let me just tell you, if you know anyone that is going through this, please put them in touch with me because I can help them <laughs> having lived it myself. The sad news, the sad news is that some of these parasites can produce 200,000 eggs per day. The eggs and the cyst, which is the um, stage that they're in this very tight ball, um, is such a, st uh, they're so, um, how do you say? They have such a firm shell, let's just call it that, um, that y the medication can't reach it. It can't reach it until it hatches, okay? So here's the part that's like blowing my freaking mind that is um, frustrating and, and disheartening to me is that um, when you kill the adult stages or the juvenile stages, it's they emit an enzyme. The enzyme tells the eggs and the cysts to start hatching. So now guess what you have? A massive infestation. <laughs> so um, at that point, this is what happened to me this, these, this last eight days, you guys. I couldn't eat anything. Um, I got so dehydrated. I had to get two IVs. Um, I had fevers, I had chills, I was again in the bathroom every single hour. It was worse than labor without drugs, and I did that twice, twice. And then, um, I mean, I don't even know how to share any more details without absolutely terrifying you all, and you might have to unfollow me. <laughs> like, it is that bad. So, um, and of course, you're going through the mental and the spiritual and the emotional roller coaster as well uh, of the whole thing of how can this be happening to me um, this is so disgusting and so dirty and no one's gonna like me anymore and like like all of that is happening as well not only that but the physical so anyway um, the medication stays in your body and I was um, eight days after taking the medication was yesterday okay um, so I started actually feeling better yesterday I started to have some energy I was getting up and about I kind of felt a little bit of life again like literally I was dragging my ass no I shouldn't swear I was literally and I've been swearing a lot this week <laughs> so I was literally dragging myself through this past week barely making it and I'm not kidding my sister said she thought I was gonna die 
Um, but, okay, so then, anyway, my point. The medication wore off, and guess what came back? The stabbing pain in my upper right of my liver area. I have flukes. Flukes are the parasites that are a flatworm that live in your ducts. How do I know? I'll tell you. Because when I would take this dose of medication at night, for three different nights, about midway through, because they kill off layers of them, um, um, what happened was I would feel this movement. Literally, you guys, as they were dying, they literally throw up a fight. And as they were dying, I would feel the movement. Um, and in the morning, like I would have the horrific pain in the evening, I would get super nauseous again. In the morning, I would pass them, and they were flukes. They were some of them were that long, some were up to you know six inches long. Not the flukes, but the worms were that long. Uh, horrendous. Okay, I know I look like shit. Whatever. It's just like been such a week. I feel like I've been in a battle, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Andrietta, I have been swearing so many f bombs, so many like total freakouts, sobbing, crying on the floor, like, I'm telling you, horrific. The pictures are horrendous. I had to take pictures because I had to give them to the doctor. <laughs> I labeled the album gross <laughs> so I can delete them and not have to see them whenever I open my, my camera album. But um, anyway, the good news, the good news. I, I, I know you guys are waiting for the good news. Um, yeah, the good news is um, I put out the prayer request and um, one of the things I kept saying was it feels like an exorcism on yourself. Um, so I called infectious diseases to get in and um, they said, no, we can't take you because you have to have a referral. Ugh. And so then I had to wait to get into the referral, right? And so that took days. Um, so I finally got into that yesterday and she was a resident, so she didn't have a lot of experience, but she was very, very, very kind and listening, good listening ear. Um, so I felt supported in that sense. So many times in the past, I've had doctors be like, we don't have parasites in the United States, no. Like, like the flippant attitude about that and not like listening to me, or, I'm just telling you guys, like being treated like you're crazy, it really sucks when your health is suffering. So for any of you who have ever felt that way, I've, I totally understand you, I see you, I believe you, I know it. What you feel is real, I know this. So I go and um, I have that appointment yesterday and literally it was a runaround. They forgot to take my um, signature to pull up my documents. So I had to go back across town and do that. I had to come back to the lab twice. Like it was crazy yesterday. So then today, um, I couldn't get into infectious diseases until next Wednesday, right? And I'm like, how am I going to make it? How am I going to make it that long? And every, it's crazy because every single appointment has, is literally how I feel. Like I feel like I'm hanging by a thread. And then um, they'll tell me, oh, well, we might be able to get to see you, you know, whatever, a month from now or a week from now, whatever. However long it is, it always feels like an eternity and how can I make it that long? That's literally like my feeling so much so it's tough um but this is the the praise the praise the praise the praise the praise the good news okay the good news is um the prayers are working you guys i said to my my mom called me two days ago and she said elise i think you need to leave the country to find treatment because it's not happening here like how many more places are we going to try and so I'm thinking, well, maybe she's right. Because if Americans are, have this belief that we don't have parasites, then how am I going to get treatment here, right? So then I start looking and I find a place. I might be going to it. It's called San Ovive. It's in Mexico, south of San Diego. They actually pick you up in San Diego, take you through the border, and um, take you to the clinic. And it is a full clinic, integrative clinic, 100% integrative. You guys, it's a really neat place. So I'm on the list for that. I have a doctor consult coming up. The second praise. Um... I'm in a new city. My family's not with me. My sister is here, but you know, my husband, my kids are back in Montana. So I've been feeling lonely. And my friend Nicole texts me and she's like, I'm praying for you to have beauty and synchronicity and love in your life. So yesterday when I'm getting my IV, I'm sitting next to a woman who is, um, you know, she looks up at me and she's like, isn't this a beautiful place of healing? And I said, yes, it is. What is your name? And her name's Crystal. And I'm like, I love your name. And we start chatting. Turns out she has so many similar issues. Um, so many of my similar beliefs about food. And um, she's treating a um, large, like a melon-sized fibroid in, off of her uterus. Whoa. 
And so we're talking about that, praying for each other. So pray for her. Her name's Crystal. Um, but my new friend. And then I ran into her at the health food store the same night. Like, come on, synchronicity. So good. So anyway, my appointment I'm waiting for was next Wednesday at Infectious Diseases. And I told my mom this morning, of course, woke up crying and so much pain because that pain is back. And um, I was crying on the floor, like just such a sobbing mess. And I called my mom, bawling my eyes out. I called Laura, bawling my eyes out. She's going to probably see this too, but it helped so much to talk to you guys. And well, what happened was I said to my mom, I think the only way I'm going to get an answer today is if my doctor is Indian. <laughs> like, if she is from India, we got this, right? Because, I mean, parasites, there are so common, you guys. And it's just so, um, like, like, there's not this weird prejudice about it. So, anyway, I said, I just think if, if she's from India, we got this. So, then my appointment, like I said, was next Wednesday. So, then um, I go in, um, well, as I'm leaving the house to go to the appointment, because they called me for a cancellation today, today with a different doctor and um, had to go bowel movement and they wanted a stool sample. So I had to take care of that and they wanted to come in straight away because this is time sensitive because the DNA, the, when the parasite dies, they emit an enzyme that starts to kill the parasite. And so it makes it very hard for them to detect on their tests. Even though I had put into their vials a six inch, two six inch long worms disgusting I know how can this be inside of me it's so gross so then um, I have to do that but guess what now I'm late to the appointment and so the doctor can't see me so they cancel it they cancel the appointment I go sit in my car I ball my eyes out I call my mom um, she's crying with me we say a prayer um, they let me know that then the a doctor's office lets me know that they actually have a different doctor that can possibly see me at one o'clock so can I please be there so I come back I'm sitting in the car in the parking lot and um just thinking to myself oh dear god let this be um a doctor from india i'm not kidding you guys this is literally what's happening and then wendy calls wendy sends me a text and she um says i just know that this is this is the day you're going to get an answer like she had no idea i was going into a, a canceled appointment right that was available and um i walk in there and it's dr patel and i I was like, uh, can I ask where you're from? And she, she, of course, full Indian accent, even does a little bit of the head tick, tick, tick that they do. I love that. Um, when they're talking. <laughs> so I was just like, oh my God, hallelujah, praise God. And so she is from India, right outside of the area where I lived when I was there, um, living in India when I was, gosh, you guys, what, how was that? I think it was 20 two years ago now 22 years ago um and she's living right outside of the area where I was where I was teaching and volunteering and I was I just said to her I you're an answer to prayer because I, I had to have a doctor that was from India I just felt like in my heart that that's what I needed and and she walks in the door and I'm just like and there was a cancellation last minute like what in the world I know Michael I know yes so I was like you guys can't understand <laughs> my joy. I mean, it's so incredible. And she was so validating. Like she took me from this place of despair and that there's no answers and no one understands. People think I'm crazy to being like, oh, I totally know what this is. I can totally treat this. And I'm like, well, do I need to be going to a, a, a like a parasitologist at UCLA? Like I am ready to go. Where do I need to go? And she was like, no, we got this. I have a plan for you. This is going to happen for you. And so, okay, can I tell you the crazy part though? She said, um, there's a drug that we need. I'm going to order it from, for you from the pharmacy. However, I don't think that you will be able to get it, but we're going to try. Okay. And she goes, um, so you, you won't start this till Monday because we're going to wait for your results from the lab. And she goes, and I don't think that they will show that it's positive because these tests are very unreliable, but you have all of the signs and symptoms. And I totally, um, and she looked at my pictures and she's like, and I totally know what we're dealing with here. And I mean, you just cannot understand how it feels to be understood when you haven't been understood about how your body feels for five years five years you guys five years and um she was like just so incredible and so just wonderful and she was 
so cute and so little. She was the she was shorter than Noah. Noah is about this tall to me. So she was it was just like I was so happy. So anyway, here's the here's the part that's insane. Can I just drop this on you? Because this is insane and this is gonna blow your freaking mind. Are you ready? Three of the drugs that are anti-parasitic that have almost no side effects for people, the side effects are caused by the die-off of the parasite, okay? Because what the parasite, what the medication does is freezes them, paralyzes them, kills them. Your body then recognizes that there is a an infection. Your immune system turns on. Your your um, your fever spikes. Your um, gut starts to take action to get it out. That's why you get the symptoms when you take that medication. Here's what's insane. Three of the drugs that have these very gentle side effects and work so effectively have been reclassified as you guessed it, cancer drugs. That should make you think. They used to be three to five dollars per pill. Now we're talking about fifteen hundred dollars per pill. Um, that should make you wonder, makes me wonder. So anyway, she said to me, I don't think you could get this drug here in the United States, but I'm going to have, um, if you can't, I'm gonna write you a handwritten prescription and you'll be able to get it from India. Uh, I'm sorry, but my mind is blown about that. Why are parasite drugs reclassified as a cancer drug that we can no longer get here in the United States? Think about that. That should piss you the F off. If you know someone that has cancer, or if you have cancer, yeah, you should be pissed. I'm pissed. Um, and I often said that it would be easier if I had cancer because then at least it would be recognized and people would diagnose it and I would get treatment. Do you see the disconnect here? This could potentially, I'm just saying, be a precursor to the big C and people can't get treatment for it. That should make you wonder. Here's what else I've learned about it. Many doctors believe that if you have a pulse, you have parasites because they've evolved with us throughout time, right? They take root into your body and they don't come out unless you kill them because why would they? They've got a happy home in you. So if you have pets, if you have traveled, if you eat at a restaurant, if you eat sushi, if you swim in a lake, a river, whatever, you have been exposed to parasites. If you have any chronic illness, do a parasite cleanse. There's herbal things you can do. If you're healthy, do it. Because if you're sick and then you have to clear the parasites, guess what? It's way harder. It's way harder. And you can't get the, the actual pharmaceutical medicine because they don't have it anymore because now it's a cancer drug. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's my PSA for the day. <laughs> and my good news. I had to share it with you because God is good and answers prayers. And look how dehydrated I am. I don't even know. Hopefully this is blurry and you can't really see me. That's my hope because I don't look very good. But. I'm coming back, I promise. I'm going to get there. I know it. So thanks for tuning in today. And uh, praise God for somebody who is so incredible, like Dr. Patel. Denise, I know. I know. I know. Okay, I'm going to recommend a book to you just in case this video gets deleted by Facebook because I have heard of people who teach this stuff. They actually get deleted from social media. And many people have just disappeared completely because they share this information. It is no joke. I know it sounds conspiracy, but I really have seen a pattern and not only in my own journey, but in other people's. So the book that I read that is, uh, some parts I thought were a little bit out there, but a lot of what she said made so much sense. Dr. Holda Clark, The Cure for All Disease. Dr. Holda Clark, The Cure for All Disease. Can someone type that in the comments? You guys got to grab that book. So good. Okay, I better drink a green juice now. I can tell I'm so dehydrated. <laughs> but it could also be that I came on here and I feel vulnerable for sharing and I'll, I'm a little embarrassed, but whatever. I figure that God is using me for this for something. And guess what else I put two and two together for? Hello, throughout history, look at, okay, look at the different cultures around the country, around the world, especially the oldest cultures, China, and India, you know, I will use those two for example. Those two cultures have specific spices they use in their cooking and their food that are anti-parasitic and they eat them every single day. Also, part of their religious ceremonies includes fasting, fasting. And if you're fasting, guess what? You're not feeding 
the extra friends. <laughs> Let's just call them the extra friends. You're not feeding them. So a lot of people will do a fast or just do a juice fast for three days. They'll take some clove or myrrh or they'll take um, wormwood. Oh my gosh, it's all escaping me now. I know Courtney's on here. Drop some bombs for them and let them know what to take. But basically, if you take some of these antiparasitic stuff, some of the antiparasitic stuff, and you do it regularly, you you won't get a hyper infection. That is the problem with me. I have a hyper infestation of parasites, multiple species, and multiple life stages. If you can boot out the guests, <laughs> the house guests early, then you're gonna not have the issues I've had. And I guarantee you, at some point, you will, your immune system will be weak because it happens to everyone. With whatever, if we're exposed to stuff, we get run down whatever it is, right? So take care of it now before you get to that point, please. If you can learn anything from this horrible journey I've been on, if I can at least give you that gift from my journey, I will feel so good. <laughs> so, um, and support your liver. That's another thing I've learned. So Dr. Holga Clark's books are incredible. Dr. J. Davidson has an incredible website. He has formulas that he makes for um, parasites. I wish I had found and learned about this stuff earlier. Um, but I didn't, you know. Maybe I was meant to go through this trauma so that I could be a guiding light for someone. Who knows? If I can help one person, it'll be worth it. Okay, that's me sharing my heart, praising God. And I just realized my sister, when I get home, she's going to be like, Elise, you must have been in a lot of stress today. Because see what I do? I bite my lip, and then this happens. <laughs> So yes, fasting every day, you guys, or not every day, but whatever, whatever works for you. I, I think it's really beneficial and cut out that poisonous sugar. So bad for you. Okay, my loves, I promise to continue to share as I feel able and just know that we're going to find some answers. It's very good. Okay. Love you. We'll talk soon. Mwah. Yeah, Jessie's sharing. She, oh yeah, thanks Jessie. My sister Jessie um, Pinkerton, she is sharing the things we've been using. And it's Paragard, we got it on Amazon. Take binders with that because you gotta mop up the nasties. You can take L-ornithine to help with the ammonia from the die off if you get a headache. You take myrrh, cinnamon, clove oil, grapefruit seed extract, mimosa pudica, which just mops it up and gets it out of the gut. And then of course your charcoal binders. All right, love you all. Ah, what a journey we are on. Thanks for being my supporters. Thanks for sharing, um, even though this is really disgusting and heart-wrenching and stomach-turning and all the gross things. <laughs> but yes, if we can return to love, even at a time like this, I'll tell you what. I, I did go through some, uh, I'll be honest, I've gone through some times of thinking to myself, how am I gonna ever really love myself? Like, this is so disgusting about myself. Like. You know what I'm, like, you might not know what I'm saying. Some of you might know what I'm saying. <laughs> but, yeah. Talk about a mind. <laughs> it's been, it's been a week. Or should I say it's been half a decade. Um, okay, love you guys. Bye. <laughs> you know what's funny? Facebook won't delete me for saying the F-bomb, but they might be delete me for sharing that information with you about parasites and cancer. We'll see. Bye.